So here we are at your homework. So let me write down the general formula for any quadratic function. Nope, needs to be fatter. Or maybe it doesn't. F of X equals A, A X squared plus B X plus C, where A, B, and C are numbers. And here we're dealing with A, B, and C being numbers in the real number system. And in fact, they're actually, for these, all rational, rational numbers like 3, negative 5, 2, what we're used to. But now we're going to be dealing with, find the vertex, find the axis of symmetry, determine whether there is a maximum or minimum value, and then graph the function. Well, we're gonna go back to your homework and graph the function there after we've gone through these, okay? So for now, let's talk about the vertex. Quadratic functions, I'm talking about functions now, look like this, or like this. The vertex is here or here. Here the vertex is the lowest point. Here the vertex is the highest point in the graph. That's obvious. You can tell that just by looking. Vertex highest point. The lowest point when you're dealing with quadratics, the lowest point is called the minimum point. And the highest point is called the maximum point. That's what a minimum or a maximum value. Well, it's almost what a mi maximum or minimum value is. And we're going to talk about the difference between a minimum point and a minimum value. But first, the vertex, when the vertex is the highest point, it is the maximum point. Now, if your vertex is the minimum point, well, first, first, all, all vertices of quadratic functions are so special, they have special letters. So we know that any point, right, is an X and Y point, any point, X comma Y where this number is the x-coordinate and that number is the y-coordinate. However, the vertex of a quadratic function <clears throat> is so special it has its own name. H, K. And H is just another name for the x-coordinate of the vertex of a quadratic function. And K, is just another name for the y-coordinate of the vertex of the quadratic function. So the same thing is going to be true here. While this is just an xy point, it's special, so it's called hk.
Now, something is always going to be true, and I love it when things are always true. When you're dealing with both of these kinds of functions. Okay, so here's my little sideways doohickey here. For both of these functions, it's going to be true that K is the minimum for the minimum point, the minimum or the maximum maximum okay value and that's always true always and i love it so here k would be the minimum value k is minimum value and here k is the maximum value. Not only that, there's an invisible line that goes up and down through the vertex of a, a quadratic function. It's not an asymptote. It's just a straight line. It's one of those invisible things that mathematicians can see and the rest of us human beings cannot. I should probably make it red. Just so it, it'll be more visible. That invisible vertical, vertical line that is not an asymptote, it's just a regular old line, but it's invisible. That's called the axis of symmetry. So dash 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 is the axis of symmetry. And it's always going to be true that the axis of symmetry has an equation like all lines have an equation x equals, because it's a vertical line, x equals, and the number over here is the h number. Always, I love it, always. When, when we're dealing with functions. Simit, I needed to move that y, make it smaller. So, the equation of this vertical line is x equals whatever the h number is. And the equation of this vertical line is x equals whatever the h number is. So, there's relatively little that you have to memorize. And what you do have to memorize is that it's, you know, it's, it's like very easy as opposed to the quadratic formula, which can be very hard. I mean, it's hard to memorize. You have to sing a silly song. None of this is that hard, as you're gonna see as we work through this. Finally, there's one more super easy little formula. H has its own 
formula. You can always find H as long as you have the function because H equals negative B over 2A where the A number is in front of the X squared and the B number is in front of the X. This is not a hard formula to remember. Quadratic formula, even some of the line formulas are hard to remember. This, is this, sorry, I love sorry. this. No, go ahead. Is this the same H that we find in the difference quotient? No, that is so good. Mathematicians screw up. Whoever decided to write down everything in mathematics, sometimes H is a little bitty measurement like in the, the difference quotient. Sometimes it's the X coordinate of the vertex. <clears throat> Thank you. It is, it is not the same thing at all. Thank you. You're welcome. So are there more questions about this? Clarifications, not necessarily questions. That was a clarification, for instance. Well, then let's do this problem. And you will see how easy all this is. And then we're going to graph uh, one or two problems in the homework, and you're going to see that that's not super difficult either. I love it. OK. So there's an invisible one in front of the X squared. Well, that's a one, believe it or not. It's kind of a backwards one. A is one for this problem. B is 12. And C is 43. What a big number. OK. So here we go. A, find the vertex. Now that A is definitely not this A. But were the authors of this book or my math lab even thinking about that? No. And what they should have done is called it one, two, and three. Or get you used to the uh, Greek alphabet. Alpha, beta, which looks just like a capital B. Or gamma, which looks like that. Um, anyway, anyway, here we go. To find the vertex, here are the steps you use to find the vertex. If you take trigonometry, you're going to have to learn the entire Greek alphabet. Talk about scary. But I, I lived through it. OK. Find, what am I looking for? The vertex. And here are the steps. Ignore the, uh, um, the question helps. The way I'm going to show you is so much easier than the way they show you. This way is easier and quicker and you're going to like it. To find uh, the vertex, first you find H. So I should have written find H. So one, find H. And then two, find K. You've got to find H first using this easier method. Let me show you how. You know that H 
equals negative b over 2a. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to fill in the blanks. Negative B, I guess I should have put parentheses there too. Negative B, there's the negative sign. So B over two times A, which is one. So this will be negative 12 over two, which is negative six. Ta-da. Definitely not hard. Even for the hard to graph problems, not hard to graph, um, like to find the x-intercepts. This is, you have to use the quadratic formula here to find the x-intercepts, but you're not being asked to do that. Isn't that nice? No, so all you need to know is h. Well, what about K? Well, here's how you find K. K equals, take a look at the function, put a negative six wherever you have an X. That's all there is to it. And you can drag out your calculator and make your calculator do the work, which is what I intend to do. Although you can always do it by hand, of course you can do it by hand. In fact, a truly good teacher would say you must do it by hand. You must. All right, here we go. I'm not going to bother writing the one, okay? Um, parentheses, negative six, parentheses, closed, squared. Always put negative numbers in parentheses and then you won't make prop, you won't have problems. So negative six squared plus 12 times, 12 parentheses, negative six, I left out my plus. OK, watch how I'm going to insert it. Second delete gives me insert and I'm going to put in a plus sign. It would be easier just to clear it and start over. But sometimes we just don't do it the easy way. So here we have it. Negative six squared plus 12 times negative six plus 43. Enter. Seven. Okay. Would I get the same thing if I did it by hand? Yeah. K equals negative six times negative six is positive 36. Plus uh, negative 72 plus 43. 36. What? Yes. When, when I put negative six in my calculator squared, it says negative 36. Of course it does, because you're not using parentheses. Oh. Yeah. Okay, thank you. That's why you've got to use parentheses. Thank you. You saved a whole bunch of people. All right. 36 plus negative 72 is negative 36. Plus 43. 43 minus 36 is seven, so K equals seven. You do not have to use a calculator. I just think it's kind of cool. So I found the vertex. The X coordinate is negative six. The Y coordinate is seven. So the vertex is negative six, Seven. Now B, find the axis of symmetry. Okay. 
Symmetry means balance. Always, this is one of those always things. X equals whatever the H number is. So what you're going to write is X equals negative six. And that's it. It does not get more difficult. All right, now you're being asked, determine whether there is a maximum or a minimum value and find the value. So here's a rule. Here's a rule. Well, I should write it in blue so it stands out. Maybe I'll even write it in my obnoxious purple. Yeah, I love it. Most of you are getting your papers graded in this color. Unless you use that color, in which case I find another color. Um, F of X equals A squared, uh, no, equals A times X squared plus B times X plus C. Here's the rule. If the A number is positive, Okay, your parabola is shaped like this. That's called cupped up. Your vertex is down here, so you've got a minimum point. Meh, meh, ne. Mum. It's not what they're asking. They're asking about the minimum value. But give me time. If you've got a minimum point, you've got a minimum value. So I'll say and minimum minimum value. Let me kind of draw a line down here to separate what's on the right from what's on the left. Of course. So, if A is positive, you have a cupped up parabola that looks like a cup of coffee. Of course, I would think of that. Here you go, there's the coffee. There's the handle. As long as your cup of coffee is cupped up, your coffee is not going to pour out. So, I mean, if you draw the picture, you see that you've got a lo the lowest point, the vertex is the lowest point, and lowest and minimum mean the same thing. Now, if, of course, this is going to be the opposite, right? If A is less than zero, which means negative, then your parabola is what we call 
really oddly shaped only because I am drawing it. This is called cupped down, which means your coffee is pouring out. <laughs> Tragedy. Cup down. Um, your vertex is up here. It's the highest point. So you've got a maximum point. and a maximum value. I'm not going to spend time on all the problems doing this, but on the first one, yes. OK, so now we've got our rule. A, the first number, is positive 1. That's definitely greater than zero. So we have a cupped up parabola, which means the vertex is a minimum point, and we have a minimum value. So the minimum value, the min val, is Seven. Okay. Here's here's the vertex. Six, negative six seven. Negative six comma seven. Now before we go on, I have to warn you that the way you're going to be asked to graph this, it's not a warning, it's a lot easier than some ways they have you graph. Um, you're going to be asked to put a dot um, on the vertex and then one other point. The easiest point, well, 43 is probably not an easy point, so, If, let's come down here, if f of x equals x squared plus 12x plus 43, if we were to find a negative value, like look look at how easy to graph a point would be if we have a negative value like negative six. You get seven, you can graph that easily. So, I mean, this is always the easiest point to graph if it's not that big, but it is that big. So let's find, let's say what if X is negative seven. I don't know. Let's do it. So we're going to have parentheses, negative seven squared plus 12 parentheses, negative seven plus 43. Um, I get my calculator. And I'm going to put that in. Parentheses, negative seven, parentheses closed squared, plus 12, parentheses, negative seven, parentheses closed, plus 43. Enter. Eight. That's easy to graph. All right, so your other point could be negative seven. What was that? Eight. Eight. That's wonderful. So when you go to graph your function, you're going to graph this point first. Of course, we'll be given all new numbers, so we'll have to do this. Um, 
you're going to graph negative 6, 7, or whatever the vertex is, and then you're going to graph your one other point. In this case, if this were the problem I was doing, I would have negative 7, 8. So I would do that, and then poof, the parabola automatically appears. Isn't that wonderful? Remind, Remind me, me how we how got, we got uh, uh, negative seven. seven. I pulled it out of the air. I can choose any X I want and then use it to find the Y coordinate. Isn't that, Isn't that are, you are you just doing guesswork at that point or can you just arbitrarily choose an X? I can, you can arbitrarily choose an X. But why I chose negative seven is I saw that I had a nice manageable Y value if um, the X coordinate turned out to be a negative number. Gotcha. So that's the only reason. But yes, because the domain of a polynomial, and this is a polynomial, goes from negative infinity to positive infinity, that means for your X coordinate, you can choose any number in the real number system. And that's a lot of freedom. Good, good question. Any more? Okay, so we'll move on. We're going to do all this again without all the writing. For the function below, find the vertex. We're going to do that first. So I have to know what A is. A is negative 3. B is negative 3. C is positive 2. So for part A, so we'll say A parenthesis, H equals negative b over 2a. So negative, negative 3 over, no, no, no. Oh, yeah, b, b is negative 3 over 2 times negative 3. Well, I can go ahead and you know, I can multiply that out or, or I can cancel the negative threes. Either way, I am going to get negative negative three, which is three, over positive two times negative three is negative six. And so that's going to be negative one half. And so K is going to equal negative three times negative one-half squared, minus three times negative one-half, plus two. Definitely easier to do on the calculator, because who likes fractions? So, negative three, parentheses, one divided by two, parentheses closed, squared, minus three, okay, yeah, minus three, parentheses, negative three, and then I have to look and see, plus two. Okay. So here, here's what I typed. Three parentheses, one half squared minus three parentheses. I just flashed back to the past. That B is a negative three, yes, but I'm not gonna put negative three in there. I'm putting negative one half in there. So, delete, delete. Now, is it negative one half? Yes. So, I should have put negative in there. Let's clear it. 
and start over. Negative three parentheses. Negative one divided by two parentheses closed squared. Minus three parentheses negative one divided by two parentheses closed plus two. There now. See, it's always good to look back over what you typed. So you don't have to be embarrassed later. All right, enter. 2.75, let's math frac that. Um, math, frac, enter, 11 fourths. Uh, professor? Yes. I got, I got uh, uh, point 0.5 uh, in my calculator. My it mind. is, you could always use negative 0.5, but I didn't want everybody here to be all messed up by doing that because not everybody might know. Well, I, I, I say that because I got a different answer for the whole equation. Uh, OK, so let's do that. Negative three parentheses, negative 0.5 squared minus three parentheses, negative 0.5 plus two. OK, negative three parentheses. Negative 0.5, parentheses closed, squared. Minus three, parentheses, negative 0.5, parentheses closed, plus two. I get the same answer. Uh, that's because I accidentally squared the second instance of uh negative one half. I input the problem wrong. Forget it. Hey, I know how it feels. Yeah, uh, we're, we're going to math frag that. There you go. Question. Yes. Um, why wouldn't you uh, multiply the negative one half with the two also? Uh, because there's not an X there. Oh, OK, appreciate that. Yes, sir. It's a good question. You stick it in the X. So now we have our vertex, which is negative one half. 11 fourths. And I'll put that in a blue box. Ta-da. More questions about that. OK. Then let us go to B parenthesis. Up here, find the axis of symmetry. I don't even have to guess. X equals negative one half. That's it. And C, determine whether there is a maximum or a minimum value and find the value. Okay, so here's our rule about A. A in this problem is less than zero. It's negative three. So therefore, your parabola is spilling out all your coffee. Boo-hoo! This is cupped down. Well, here's your vertex up here. It's the highest point. So it's a maximum point. And if you've got a maximum point, you've got a maximum value. So 
So, 11 fourths is your maximum value. So let us here and here. Now for graphing D graph. For graphing, you've got a gimme point here. This time we have a small constant at the end, which is ideal. Your other point, okay, your two points you're gonna use. Okay, is of course the first one will be negative one half, 11 fourths. And what they do when you've got answers like this and you have to put your vertex, is they break down the graph into fourths. So like if this is zero and this is one, you would have one, two, three, four. Okay, so you'll see this. Between zero and one, you would have well, actually, that's not true. You would have one, two, three, and then the fourth one would be the one. Can I ask a question? Sure. Going back to C with um, 11 fourths being positive, wouldn't that be the minimum value? You would think or so. Do I have it backwards? You would think so. There's this rule right here, that if A is a positive number, you've got a cupped down parabola, which means you actually have a minimum, a lowest point. It's one of those backwards things in math. It feels like you should have a maximum point, but you actually have a minimum point. Now here, if A is less than zero, you've got a cupped up a cup down parabola, which means your vertex is the very highest point, which means you've got a maximum point and a maximum value. Again, That's right. I forgot that point. Yeah, Thank it's you. kind of backwards. Thank you for asking that. I agree with you completely. Okay, two points. There would be your first point that you have to use, but your second point could be the constant at the end because this is your y-intercept. It's the point zero, two. So that's two on the y-axis. The reason I didn't do that up here was that 43 is a humongous number. And probably the graph is not built for it. So you would you would be forced to find another point that fits inside the graph so you could graph it. That's the only reason I did it this way. Usually your constant at the end is going to be small enough that you can just take the lazy person's way out. Let's do one more. And we have to do this one online as well. You're going to see this. This is to introduce you to a new a new function in my math lab, not a new math function, but a new thing that my math lab can do. And here it is. For the function below, yeah, the math part is just the same, but down here it says show all your work on the show work screen. Use your stylus and touch screen tablet or Take a photo that clearly shows all your work and upload it to the show work screen. 
at this point, let's go ahead <clears throat> and go to my math lab. Okay, this is class 42. And here we are, at, oh, I don't want that. Not if I wanna actually work the problem. I wanna go to your screen, go to assignments, and click here. Here's your homework. So, your first problem gives you a video and shows that shows you how to work the problem. I shouldn't have in included that actually because it probably shows you a way that I don't want you to know because it's too hard. I hope it doesn't. Here we go. And I'm going to show you how to show your work. So let me come over here and pull this up. Because I'm going to need room to calculate. OK. Now, the first thing, I, and I'm going to be showing my work. Oh, that's right. I'm going to show my work. So I really don't need that screen. There is something down here at the bottom. I hope you can see it. Let me do this first and kind of pull this up. See the show work box that's highlighted in red? I am going to click on show work. There. And a little box comes up. Now, if you have a touchscreen tablet and a stylus, you can just do your work right here. But I realize a lot of you don't have that, so no problem. You just take a photo and upload the photo by clicking right there. You choose a picture and you upload it. However, I'm going to, I do have a touch screen, so I'm going to click on stylus and I'm going to start writing. Okay, we've got f of x. Admittedly, it doesn't seem to write very well. f of x plus, oh, equals x squared plus 12x plus 40. So again, that's a really big number. So you want to back yourself up a little bit. Um, okay, so to find the vertex, see how I'm just doing my work here. I'm going to have H equals negative B over 2A, which is going to be negative 12 over 2, yeah, 2 times positive 1. Oh, and look, we're going to get negative 6 again. So that's H. Now I come over here, and we're not going to get the exact same answer. F of negative 6, that's how you find K. Parentheses, negative 6, negative, negative 6 squared plus 12 times negative 
six plus 40. And then I, I get out, well, I don't have to get out my calculator. I'll have 36 plus negative 72, is that right? Yes, plus 40, which will be um, negative 36 plus 40. So that's going to be positive 4. So my vertex is going to be negative 6 positive four. And what happens when I go up here? Oh, it doesn't disappear. Cool. Parentheses. Negative six comma four. Parentheses closed. Do I check answer yet? No. Okay, the axis of symmetry. That's going to be X equals negative six. Do I check my answer yet? No. All right, so it says, do I have a maximum or a minimum value? Let's see. This one is a number greater than zero. So that means I have a cupped up parabola. My vertex, <laughs> that's my vertex, God help us all. My vertex is there. So this is a minimum value. Yes. And the minimum value is, don't even stop to think, four, yeah, four is gonna be either uh, both your minimum, um, either depending on the situation, your minimum value or your maximum value. Here we've got a minimum value. So our minimum point is going to be four. Okay, now use the graphing tool. So do I get to save my work? No, I need another point. Okay, I need another point. I can't use 40. That is, I'm almost sure, almost sure I cannot use 40. So let's see, how about an, what we did before? If negative six gives me a manageable value, maybe negative five will give me a manage, manageable value. So F of negative five, see I just kind of picked it out of the air. I could do negative two or negative one or even positive one, but that would probably give me a really big value. So um, negative five, squared, squared, plus 12 times negative five, plus 40. That'll be 25. Really, 12 times negative five, that's 60, isn't it? Yep, minus 60. Plus 40. So I am going to use the calculator for that. Uh, 25 minus 60 plus 40. I get 5. So let me just make sure. I, I feel very uncertain about this. Parentheses, negative five, parentheses closed, squared, plus 12x. It is plus, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Plus 12 times negative five, 
plus 40. It's five, okay, five equals five. So um, negative five, five would be my other point. So y'all remember this in case the screen disappears. Um, negative six, four and negative five, five. Now I'm going to click here. All right, click the graph, choose a tool in the palette. OK, I'm going to choose the parabola tool. Click the graph to plot the vertex. All right, so the vertex is negative six. Four, one, two, three. Click the graph to plot a point on the parabola. Negative 5, 5. Save. I guess save. Check answer. Ha! Okay. Cool. Cool beans. So there's my work. Not a lovely work of art. But notice the tools you have here. You've got a box. I'm not sure what you'd use that for. I don't know. Um, you have a stylus, and you get to choose how big it is. You have an eraser, get to choose how big it is. Maybe that would let you type if you wanted to. And there's pi if you need it. You can choose colors. You can choose Oh, how cool is that? You can choose a, different kinds of backgrounds. Oh, you can choose lines. You can choose graph paper. Uh, what is this? Again, colors. What is that? Not sure. You can even delete the whole thing and start over. You can choose correct, what would that do? Oh, it just repeats the second, the last thing I did. Okay, and if you don't have a stylus and a, uh, um, a writing screen, then you can um, just as easily pretend it's the test, take a photo of your work and upload it right there. So in some ways, it's even easier for you to show your work. OK, I'm going to save again. OK, want to take a break? Let's take a break.